Thank you for, uh, for having me here. Uh, let's see, is it coming up? Ah, there it is. It, it's quite the irony that I have Cultivating Calm just right after that super epic video at the start. Um, but let me explain to you uh, today what Cultivating Calm, uh, what I mean with that. It's the philosophy that we work with. Um, so I'm Harold Dunning. I'm the founder and creative director of Momkai. We're a uh, digital design agency in, uh, in Amsterdam. And um, we um, uh, exist now, I think, for 15 years or so. Uh, but I started like super young and um, I started a studio really because at the time there were like all these big technological uh, companies uh, they were very much tech driven and I wanted to create a design studio that is uh, has digital at its core but really puts the story and the users first um, and that we are a studio always around 25 to 30 people so I don't want to have it too big I really see the the studio as a as a, a means to an end. It's, not a, it's like a drawing table, it's not a, it's not a goal, it's the way that I can create and then I cr can create with uh, really good creatives uh, that I feel blessed with, that I can work with. Um, and I think last year um, um, I was invited for the, um, um, the Contemporary Art Museum in Amsterdam to do a audio tour, which is uh, really, really fun to do. Um, because I have like my best friends are totally not into art, so I could always envision them and giving a tour and then explaining them the, the beauty of art, and it's actually really quite inspirational. Um, but it also gave me an opportunity that I, while I was walking uh, through the museum, I discovered that um, the the architect of a museum almost has the uh, a similar. Uh, aims that I have with with our designs because um, like in an art museum you can strip out all the distraction and you can let someone really focus so we are bombarded with images every day but in a museum all of a sudden we take like a, 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 a minute or, an, or, or uh, even an hour to look at, at certain artworks and this is something that we are looking for uh, to create in the in the digital realm with uh, with Momkai, um, um, and how we call that is to cultivate calm. So to find a way that uh, I can strip everything out and only the content can drive you to do a distraction. So I want today I want to guide you a little bit through that philosophy um, and uh, show you some examples of how we envision that. Um, philosophy uh, in our work and how we, how we use it uh, day to day. Um, and I used uh, the platform that we are, uh, um, uh, that we have built, um, what J James mentioned in the beginning, the correspondence, it's a journalistic platform, uh, and I worked there with a lot of writers and that really inspired me to write down this philosophy. So calm in Dutch is rust, um, and uh, Normally I don't say this, but uh, here's all digital uh, people, so normally I write, but then uh, this we just wrote like on a tablet, and then you can capture it. So this is actually me writing it, it's really, and that's what we use a little bit throughout this uh, presentation. So in Dutch it's uh, rust, but in uh, English that's rusty, so don't mix that up. Um, so let's see. Um, we, have, we have built it up in uh, three steps. So. We have a foundation, approach, and how to grow with it. And within these steps, we have three um, sub-chapters, so to say. So George Lucas would be proud of that structure. Um, so we start with the foundation. So the foundation should always be, it's, like, it's almost like what I'm doing now. So we create a center stage for the optimal um, way of, to, to really uh, get the story across. And then after that, we really go um, for the approach. So how can we still keep that calm to really uh, um, catalyze, to really start uh, things running? And after that, of course, it's always about um, to keep it growing. And it's almost like you put yourself in the middle of a storm and always have the calm and the overview to let things grow. So let's start with that first one. So the really the, the center stage of uh, of, uh, of yeah that that really exudes the, the calm, um, and um, I think for any project, 
Uh, and we al always hope that this philosophy is also a bit inspirational in your, in your own work. But we always feel it's very important when you start out that you create coherence. So in a way that whatever you start, that it's, that it's your goal to always make it uh, feel complete. That, it's, uh, that you can really recognize all the different parts as being uh, part of, of a whole story. Um, so that everything is coherent, because if you have that, it really builds trust and your users or your clients or members or whatever you are designing for, then feel reassured that this is all part of one story. Um, to give you an example, this is something that I haven't shared anywhere yet, because it's only shared with the, with the institute itself, is that we are working together with a, um, it's a, a new in institute that's uh, um, going to be set up for um, uh, fundamental uh, cancer research. So it's um, uh, three ministries and the Dutch Cancer Association um, are uh, funding 120 million into uh, cancer research, but they're not building a new building. So most of that money, almost all of the money goes into really research. So all the researchers are in different locations. So they're not having this building, but we feel it's really important that you still create an identity and a way to connect all these different uh, scientists. Um, because we have really good uh, cancer researchers in the Netherlands. And I think what we nowadays do when we start an identity, whenever we start an identity, we we'll always say to, to the people that we're working with, um, if I want to start, uh, creating something for you, want to start designing something for you, it's really important that we first start with writing. Because I really first need to understand what is your goal. And you can imagine with fundamental cancer research, that's a really deep dive before we completely understood all the ins and outs. So to give you a really a short summary of that, the idea with, um, with this institute is that uh, a lot of research within cancer is uh, clinical research, so that you can test it out on patients. Um, but not so much uh, emphasis is on fundamental research. So um, it's almost like a decoding cancer, to, to find a way of how, um, how cancer works, in the, also on, really on an individual level. So the aim of the institute is that by in, in within 20 years, uh, cancer for 90% of the people will become a chronic disease. It's similar to what happened to AIDS. Um, so that's really a beautiful ambition, of course. So we worked with them first on, on writing down their principles. It's almost a bit like what I show now with, um, with, uh, with our own uh, manifesto, is that we first have to write that down. And it also gave us a lot of insight on how it works, and it actually gave us the first tagline. So we created the name and the tagline for them. Um, so the aim was really, you can do fundamental research, but it only has value to society, to patients, if we can really find and take those findings and translate them to either new technologies or new, uh, new insights of how to treat patients. So it's really important that, and that we didn't see it as fighting, or because that's a lot of talk within cancer is about to, to beat it, which is not really um, good for people if, of course, you, it can metastate it so much that you can't uh, survive it. Um, so then people feel not only uh, uh, really loss of their family, but they also feel that they have lost something, that they have lost the fight. So we really wanted to find a way of differentiating that, calling it outsmarting cancer, um, and then impacting lives. And the Uncode Institute, it's, we wanted to have a way that it's both in Dutch and in English the same to pronounce, and it's almost like they're decoding. So Onco is oncology, cancer research, and code is really uh, about uh, the code that they, because a lot of cancer research is in the end nowadays really about, uh, about data. Um, and we wanted to have a way that we um, express that, so to really make it uh, uh, to a coherent um, idea. So the idea with cancer is not a code, it's almost it's the irregularity, nice word, um, within a genome. So for us, like uh, not working in cancer research, we, we can't see what's happening here, but the things that are uh, 
uh, it's, it's almost like for, for scientists that are deep into it, it's hidden in plain sight. And that's something that we wanted to express also in the design language. So we wanted to show code where we have ways of that we don't know parts, so that we have um, elements that are still blank, and with the lines we wanted to express a way of that it's always metastating, always changing, because that's what cancer is. It's a, it's a deregularity of your cell growth. In the end, that's the most simplest way of talking about cancer. So to, do, to really show that in a way of, um, of having uh, this, this code, the ever-changing code, we wanted to really show that in a way in our designs as well, uh, in a way that we thought, but then when we design it, it, there should never be one instance. So we found it really important, I thought like, okay, then we have to code our design. So this is on the, on the right, that is the actual code in the browser. Scientists love this, where you show them this. And it, to me, it always feels really matrix, because it does that whoosh, the whoosh in there, and it's really nice. But it's, um, so in a way, in the digital realm, we can always show this variation in there. So the, um, the logo is never really static. And if you see that then all combined, this is how it now, how it now shows really combined. So it's, it shows really modern effort of the, of the institute. Um, but still has the, the classical sense of an institute, so actually, we actually call it an institute, we claim that right away, and we also use typography that is quite uh, basic and toned down. This, this is quite a modern font, um, but it has that classical sense um, um, with all the detailing. So, and here you see it all, all combined. So um, I think this will launch February uh, next year, um, hopefully with the Queen there, that would be awesome. Um, but um, so this is um, this gives you an idea of how to make something really full circle with something that's well, literally a circle. Um, so the next one within creating the center stage is really to assure uh, uh, clarity, to to find a way that um, um, that we understand the world around us and that we give context to that world. Um, and I think. So the, the platform that actually inspired me to write down this philosophy is, is the correspondent that we started, I think, four years ago now. Um, so as a, as a design studio, we both work for clients and do partnerships. Um, but on the other hand, we're also co-founders. So we start new initiatives where we think it's really important. Um, we are shareholders. Um, and the cool thing of that is that I have really control of the identity and the platform and the way we communicate because we sit like the editor-in-chief and the CTO, the publisher and myself, we are like four shareholders, all having equal shares and all have an equal voice at the table. Um, and this way we, we can really see, okay, what the ambition that journalists have, how can we then best express this on a platform? Um, Normally, I, I have a little story about the correspondent, but just last night I got the rough edit of a video, our first video in English, explaining it more. Um, old me would never show that. Uh, newer me is like more open to be foldable and say like, oh, fuck it, I just show it to you guys. It's a really simple video. We have some uh, correspondents explaining what is the correspondent, and hopefully that gives clarity. But please note the, the sound is not... It's not uh, the, the, it hasn't been to the sound editor, um, so it sometimes still sounds cheap. They will change that. And the color is off, so that you just know that. But um, this gives you hopefully a little bit of an idea of uh, what the correspondent is. <laughs> News is always about what happened today, but never about what happens every day. The news will tell you, for instance, that a bank collapsed today, but not that banks do things every day that put our savings at risk. The news will tell you that there was a terrorist attack today, but not that our rights are eroded every day out of fear of terrorism. The news will tell you what the weather will be like today, but not that every day our climate is getting warmer and warmer. So if you only follow the news, you'll miss the fundamental developments that shape the world around us. At The Correspondent, you get a different kind of news. 
News that isn't just meant to grab your attention, but to give you constructive insight into how the world works. And your expertise helps us do that. Because a thousand experts will always know more than a single journalist. Together, we help each other to better understand the world we live in. So we can find out not only what happened, but also why it happened and what that means for us all. And, you, and this, this uh, is Dutch for also to, uh, like a call to action to also become a, a member. So as you see, it's still very much work in progress. But hopefully it gives you a little bit of a, a different way uh, of uh, expressing what the correspondent is about. Um, yeah, and lastly, for the podium part, it's really, a, uh, I think it's very important to, that we always furnish the context so that we know what we're designing for. Um, and if, I always feel uh, that if you're, if you're not fully aware of what you are creating or that you don't understand it, so if, for example, with the cancer uh, project, um, the cancer research project, I read a lot of books to really make sure that I understand this, this concept, because otherwise, if I wouldn't be doing that, we would be designing confusion because it, would be, it wouldn't have the, 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 the idea of, of understanding behind it. So we, we find that really important. And that's also something that we want to bring across. So with um, uh, eight other agencies in the Netherlands, we um, started the first a master digital design. Um, uh, and together with the University of uh, Applied Sciences in uh, Amsterdam, it's, uh, it's the master digital design. And we thought, like, okay, if we want to work on that, and we're going to help that create, then from Monka, I really like it if we would be the ones also designing it, because then we're designing for designers. You can't have more critical public than that. So I thought, like, okay, bring it on. Um, so the master is really a, a new um, yeah, high-profile education that we, uh, that we started. Um, and uh, it's really, uh, it's a bit like maybe what you know from, like, Hyper Island. But then with Hyper Island, you don't get an actual Master of Science degree, which you do get here. And something like that costs, uh, I don't know, 10,000 or really a lot. This one costs um, uh, 2,000 because the Dutch government is supporting this. So it's, uh, it's cost less and it actually gets you a Master degree, which in, normally in digital design was very hard to get. Um, and um, we wanted to see, like, okay, so it's a master digital design, we call it, and it's really about the, the digital realm that's ever-changing. And we wanted to have it really about design, so in a way that's a lot about creativity, about craftsmanship. So this, this um, course just started, so the first year, is, I think, um, yeah, two weeks ago, um, we... Uh, we um, yeah, had the official launch and the first 25 students in. So if there are any students, you can apply for this um, for next year. Uh, I think the application already starts in a month's time or so. But let me show you a little bit of the design that we did for that. So we wanted to have a way of... Because it's a university, I can't really design a logo because the, the university already has a logo, so we have to think more about patterns in a way of how to express the institute. Um, that it shows creativity, and that's in very abstract ways shows MDD, and it shows craft, that we can combine those, um, and then we can create diversity with that. Um, and that it really reflects complexity that we all face in digital, so how does it work on different platforms, different screens, different user input. We wanted to have that in there. And then again, we wanted to really have that dynamic, so in a way that we can always let that grow and move within videos, within the site, within all different uh, uh, implications. So here you see really how that, how that language is ever evolving. This was the original date that we were hoping to launch. It ended up to be 2017. Things with ministries always take really long. Um, and here you see how it can then evolve to how you have that in a um, uh, video language. So let me show you the, the next one, the calm to uh, catalyze. So again, if we, we show you a little bit of the master digital design, but then really, I find it really important to really invest the liberty, so to be really aware of where you put your time in. I think there was really nice also in the opening uh, credits video uh, where they are also um, making the point of that you don't give your soul to anyone or any 
fucking insurance company or whatever someone is selling, really be aware of that your energy and, and time is valuable and that your creativity should be hopefully uh, given to the best causes or the most interesting projects, um, which can be commercial projects. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I love those as well. I have some at, at the end. Um, oh. And always people think with calm, the calm to, uh, to catalyze that everything in our work is calm. It's not so much. So we have a little video explaining what the master digital design is. So that gives you a bit of understanding. Um, <laughs> so that gives you a bit of understanding on uh, on where we want the master to be. So that it's it's really like a master course, so that people become more leaders and become more aware of the the, uh, the the power that they have with their creativity, and that they can guide others more with it. And um, the video was. Uh, um, animated by Eddie, a colleague of mine who already worked with for, for 10 years. Um, and um, that language of ever-changing, uh, that's also something that we wanted to have in the digital realm. So this is a capture of the website on like a, a large screen, um, where we wanted to have a way of really simply expressing what the master is about, but that whole feeling that you saw in the beginning, because the animations in the previous part was really also partly conceptual, is something that we also wanted to have in the, in the whole environment, the whole uh, digital realm. So have a way that whenever you go through it, everything still adapts. So it's, it's expressing that whole idea of that digital is never, never um, um, fixed. So... Um, and for anyone that wants to join, you can go to this website, masterdigitaldesign.com, and uh, can apply for, um, uh, for the next course. Um, then within building that up and within catalyzing it, it's very important, uh, I, I learned it the hard way, to write down everything uh, in a very good way. Um, uh, we were always quite clear in our offers and in our... Uh, um, uh, ways of doing it with clients, but especially when you start things out with uh, friends, then you don't write down everything so well. So that's what we do nowadays really well. <clears throat> so really invest in that. I think it's very important. Um, as creatives, you're sometimes too easily just give everything away. So really guard the input that you give. And it's something that we also do now when we, for instance, do a pitch or when uh, we do a uh, like new prospect work. Um, so just last week, so I have some things in here that I never showed, that's nice. But uh, just last week we had, a, we had that for a, a bike brand that I can't uh, name. Um, but then we thought like, okay, it's really good if we write down the story, but if we also not only uh, have that written, but also show them who are the team leads, uh, and that way also guard our input, because then it becomes way more personal. <clears throat> so we did like little bios and had uh, photos of... Um, the, the, the people in the studio. So it's a, it's a couple of uh, guys that work on the new uh, bike project. It's not any of the bikes you see in the photos. Um, uh, to show for them, like, okay, we have a little buy, uh, why are they cycling? What is their passion about that? And that they um, immediately, it's, a, it's a, um, a, a prospect from abroad, that immediately they also see the studio without ever visiting the studio. So it's a nice way of, uh, and it's now a nice way for me to show to you a little bit of the studio. Oh, and then only I discovered that I'm exactly wearing the exact same thing now that I did here, uh, but it has been washed. Um, 
So um, another thing that's really important in that, and that's I think for, for all of us that work in digital, it's also really the most fun thing, I think, is really cherish the users, get input from the users, um, and, it's, uh, um, uh, and that you never get too fixed in your idea. So at some point you always think like, okay, I know I have the best solution for this, but then you do some research or you do some user testing or uh, some input from there, and you see that you actually have to change your ideas or have adapt to that. And I think within digital, that is really one of the most fun things to do. So we were blessed to do a project together with uh, Google, and then you could also see that how they could do that. So they can send out these, have different ways of, of um, um, getting insights and get, sharing forms and all that with people, um, uh, which is, uh, they have a really quick way of getting almost, we had like, I think, 50,000 responses to certain questions, which is crazy, but it's the power they have, of course, where they can share these, these um, uh, forms in, in, in um, uh, different environments. And it really is guiding us now in a, um, uh, an, uh, another project that we're doing. It's for another bike brand, so, but I'm, again, not <laughs> allowed to, to, to share that, uh, unfortunately. But it's really inspiring to see, and um, I think... Um, there's a way that Google also has now Google Zoo. So sometimes when you work more for clients or more commercial clients, then sometimes you can also work with Google in that way, and Google just invests in that themselves. And it's a really nice way of getting insights and, uh, and working with uh, people from the inside there. So it gave us uh, a really uh, a nice thing to work on, but I'm completely not allowed to show you. So <laughs> I just show you it really briefly. Um, so the last one is really about growth, about really getting uh, further ahead. So really the calm within that storm. And uh, again, um, that's, yeah, that's really about, uh, it's either your own practice or your own designs or the stuff that you're working on, that you think about how can I let that grow. And grow to me is not always literally people. So that's very often, especially in design agencies or creative agencies or ad agencies that People find it really cool to say on a party that how many people work there, and I always find it super uninteresting. I just want to hear what you make, not how many people work there. And um, but the funny thing is that for the design agency, that is a norm. I think it's a good philosophy for what we do with Momkai. But then for something like the correspondence, I do want to have the most people because then uh, if we have more members, we can. Uh, really let it grow. So that's what we are researching now to uh, hopefully also go to the English language. Um, and we just started a research project with uh, Jay Rosen. It's a New York University professor. Uh, they call him the rock star of media studies. Uh, really nice guy, super American. And um, uh, we just started with him for a year research to find out what kind of member um, membership uh, solutions uh, are out there, not only within news, but also maybe in, uh, um, uh, with other things, uh, cycling and all these different things, have, uh, like, uh, or football clubs or whatever, where you have memberships, what we can learn from that. Because I think it's very powerful within the digital realm that how you can create uh, communities. And how Jay Rosen uh, phrased it really nicely for, um, for our project is that he aims for um, communities that are optimized for trust. And I think that's something that we really want to do with the correspondence as well. News optimized for trust. Um, and we are really proud that we have uh, Emily uh, with us. Uh, uh, she was the former user research lead at the New York Times. I couldn't believe that we could actually get such a person on, and it's really powerful. So they are researching it now. You can read those research findings at uh, the membershippuzzleproject.org. Uh, um, and it uh, can be very insightful, not only for when you work in news, but also when you do communities in other uh, digital environments. And the aim is really that we hope that we can really start a decorrespondence. So that's really a wish for a very long time. Um, the other wish I had for a very long time was to get this logo animated. Um, and now uh, we could work with Mantas, he's a guy from Lithuania. Um, and um, yeah, I really love how he also designed uh, the fading it away. Uh, yeah, sexy, right? <laughs> and that brings me to my last point, which is really to create unfettered uh, 
So to always keep on creating and never really get bored with that. Uh, I never, uh, never get bored with it. So for me, it's really Momka is a studio. That is my way of doing that. It's just a way, uh, again, it's just a drawing table. It's just a team that allows you to really create. And I think you can always find that. You don't have to start your own agency for that. You can also find that within an agency that you work with or within uh, different um, uh, collaborations. Um, but to really find a way that you keep on uh, creating and keep on finding ways of doing things that you've never done uh, before. So that's my talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Harold. We're a little bit over time, but there's one question for you. That was really good, a real abundance of knowledge. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank yeah. you. Um, so, one from Nick uh, Diamond Dees. Um, Harold, the design approach you take for logos is digital first, web animated. How do these logos work for print and signage? Uh, very good question. So, something with the Cancer Institute where you, you, saw, you saw now the digital one. Of course, I can animate that, that's really nice. Um, but um, for, uh, for the printed one, I haven't shown that because otherwise it would go even more over time. Um, um, we have in print, have the logo and then uh, take little gaps out of it. Right. So when you, you, you pick it up, your, your business card has the, the dots, where also there are other dots missing. So you, you, you get that same interaction again of um, uh, where you see the logo kind of changing. Yeah. Um, it's maybe hard to express if I can't show it, but it, it, it's very, uh, very good point. Uh, uh, we want to find that dynamic. So if I would have a, a, a map, uh, let's say, or, or um, how you say that, um, uh, so where you put a sheet of paper in, yes. a folder, yes. um, but then a real life folder, then uh, so I could have that logo and then have some holes out of it so it looks kind of okay and when I open then I see that there's certain gaps. So that way I can still say there are certain things in the code of cancer or the, the irregularity of cancer that we still don't understand. So we, we do uh, find ways of uh, hopefully expressing the same dynamic idea of, of digital also in print. And we do more print nowadays for that. So I guess you consider all those things before you start designing the logo, and also while well, you're in the process <laughs> of the design of the logo, how it will work in print. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's in the process. It's yeah. not literally at the start, but it's in the process where you think like, okay, this is nice uh, in the digital realm, how can we still have that dynamic? Uh, so hopefully next uh, time I have a chance to represent that is, because now it only exists in the digital because the institute is not there. Yeah. So I, I, they didn't invest in printed uh, elements yet, okay. but uh, I would not love yet. to go into that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Time. Okay. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Thank you. Cheers. Aradanak, everyone. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah.